tells us that there were two people there were two disciples there were disciples of Christ and they were walking together and as they were going together the Bible said they were heading towards the village of Emmaus this word never gets hold because as you understand how the Lord is moving you are opening yourself telling Lord God as a vessel I can only be used by you 
You have used even Nebuchadnezzar. You have used even Nebuchadnezzar. And yet he was a wicked, he was a wicked person. He has nothing with you. He has nothing for you. And yet you have molded his heart. How much me? How much more me? How much more me? If you can mold the heart of a wicked person, if you can mold the heart of an unbeliever, if you can mold the heart of an atheist, how much me who comes unto you and call upon the name of the Lord? So the disciples, they were going to Emmaus. And the word of the Lord reminds us that they were discussing about the things that have happened in Jerusalem. And as they were discussing, the Lord Jesus threw himself near them. And you see, you notice that it was not the absence of Christ among themselves. It was the absence of recognizing the presence of Christ. The Lord Jesus drew himself to them. And he was walking with them. And he was communing with them. And they could not perceive his presence not because he was absent, but because they had an absence of the recognition of the presence of Christ. Until they came to a place where the, the prayer was broken. You got to break yourself. You got to break the limitation. You got to break the unbelief. Thomas was a disciple of Christ. He was not an unbeliever. He has walked with Jesus Christ for three years and a half. And he has been in the presence of Christ. He has seen the miracles. He has seen the power. He has seen the deliverance. He has seen the healing. He has seen the word. He has seen the move. And Thomas was still struggling with believing the report of the Lord among the believers. And yet he was not an unbeliever. He was not an atheist. He was not from Samaria. He was not from Egypt. He was not from the Gentiles. He was not from Rome. He was unelected. He was a chosen. He was an appointed. He was different. But he struggled to believe the report of God among the saints of God. But Christ did not abandon him. Hallelujah. The word of God says, Thomas was honest. I say he was honest because he told to the believers, to the saints, he said, listen, I don't believe anymore. He said, I don't believe. I don't believe. He did not play the I believe God while he was not believing. Are you for what I'm saying? He said, I don't believe. The sanctity of his heart was made upright because he has confessed his limitation into recognizing the problem was not the power of Christ. The problem was that his heart was not yet uncircumcised because he has not felt the He was not feeling anymore the presence of God. He thought that Christ was dead and was still in the tomb. So his mind was not resurrected with the spirit that resurrected Christ from the dead. His mind was still in the things of the past of what God has done in the past but God says see I'm doing a new thing what your social capital open your eyes to see but his mind was still captured captivated focused on the things that the Lord has said in the past and yet he failed to see that the things that Lord have said in the past that were being fulfilled in his time, in his eyes, in his presence, before him. But the grace of God did not disparate him. The grace of God did not abandon him. The grace of God did not let him down. 
he was truthful enough to say, brethren, I heard your report. I heard what God did for you. I heard you saw Christ. I heard you saw his word. I heard you saw his resurrection. I know all of you, you are telling the truth, but the problem is my heart cannot believe. problem is not with a report. The problem is with my heart. I can hear you and as you tell me that you saw Christ resurrected, I can remember that the Lord Jesus said, after three days, I will raise myself again. He said, I have power to lay down my life. I have power to raise it up. He was there with Christ, with all the disciples. He heard the report of Christ. He heard the prophecy of Christ. He heard the word of God. He heard it. He was not different. He was not away. He was among them. He was hearing it. And he heard God telling that after three days, oh, I will raise. So indeed, three days have arrived. As it was appointed. Moses said, if the prophet among you says a word who does not pass, he is not a prophet. And here comes the word of God prophesying that three days after I have gone down to the tomb, I have I will be risen again. I will rise again. And three days after, count for count, day for day, hour for hour, time to time, minute for minute, he rose as he promised. So Thomas heard Christ himself saying, I will do that. And then three days after, the Lord told, go tell to my disciple to go unto Galilee, for I'm going to meet them. He said, even, I feel like he says, leave your personal comfort and go gather and I will be among you. And he came among them, but Thomas was still in a position of a suffering. He was still in a position of unbelief, of disbelief. He was still in a position where he could no longer continue. So he was not among the disciples when Christ came. He was missed. He was absent. Nevertheless, when he came, they told him, Thomas, here comes me Peter, me John, me James, me Bartholomew, me Philip, we saw the Lord, we saw the Lord. You know you have been with us for three years and a half. You know that our report is true. You know that we should not lie to you. You know we haven't lied to you. And you know that the God that you worship did not lie to you. Three days prayer. Why don't you believe? He says, the problem is not with your report. The problem is not with the promise of God. The promise is that I have lost hope. I have lost hope. I have lost hope. I have lost hope. He could not even pray to the Lord, Lord, manifest yourself to me. He didn't pray. He said simply, I don't believe. He said, if I, if I don't see him for myself, I won't believe. And yet he saw Christ for himself three years. Hallelujah. He saw Christ for himself three years. You and I today, we are calling for the presence of God. We don't see him in the physical. He saw Christ in the physical. And yet he failed. So Lord, the problem is not a report of my brethren. It's not with your word of truth. 
it has I have come in a place I have lost hope I have come in a place I don't believe so he told to his brethren I have no shame no more I cannot hide before ye I cannot hide that I have an issue with my belief so he said I don't believe unless I see you see even in the midst of his unbelief he had a desire to see and to believe are you what I'm saying even in the midst of his unbelief he did like the other one who was a leprous he said Lord help my unbelief I believe what your word says is true but I don't see the current the electricity the flow the power of what you said manifested in my life but I know that you are not a liar I know you are not a man I know you are not a son of man to repent I know you are the Messiah I know you are the living one I know you are the one to come but I am still struggling to understand that mystery of your love towards me that mystery of your faith towards me that mystery I'm still struggling he said Lord Jesus I believe that you are true but I still have unbelief that he will be true for me and the Lord Jesus did not rebuke and disparage him hallelujah he looked at him he said listen I'm gonna restore you beyond measure I'm gonna do it again for the word of God says that uh, he did good everywhere he went he did good everywhere he went when he went in your limitations he did good where he went in your limitations he did good wherever he went in your unbelief he did good whatever he went in your fears he did good everywhere he went in your life he did good whatever he went in your health he did good whatever he went in your dreams he did good whatever he went in your shackles he did good whatever he went in your tomb he did good whatever he went in your cries he did good whatever he went in your oppressions he did good whatever he went in your anxiety he did good whatever he went in your poverty he did good whatever he went in your worries he did good whatever he went in your marriage he did good whatever he went in your life he did good for he did good wherever he went and the word of the Lord tells us that here comes Thomas telling him Lord to Thomas telling the brethren unless I see the marks unless I see those marks for myself I just cannot believe he acknowledged that they were true he acknowledged that Christ is true but he acknowledged, I, I just cannot believe. It is in the honesty, sincerity, and truth of his heart that the Lord decided to draw himself to him just as he drew himself to the Emmaus disciples. And the Bible says, as the if day has arrived, all the door was shut. But you see, Thomas, in his unbelief this time learn that even though I still struggle with my unbelief listen very carefully 
Even though I still struggle with my unbelief, I will be present in, among the saints. I will be in the gathering of the saints. Because you see, the Lord did not appear to him singular. Listen, the Lord could have appeared to him separately. Hallelujah. But what did the Lord do? He came in the presence of the saints. And then that day, Thomas was also found in the presence of the saints. And the word of God said that all the doors were shut. All the windows were shut. All possibility that a turnaround can be were not there. All possibility that it would be a breakthrough were not there. It was a Sunday as usual. It was a Saturday as usual. It was a Friday as usual. It was a Sunday as usual. It was a Monday as usual. It was a Tuesday as usual. He just came among themselves because he had to come. But the Lord said, as I have seen the deep of your heart, the deep of your trouble, the deep of your struggle. Have I have seen the truth of your heart? Has I ever heard your limitation? Has I ever heard your addictions? Has I ever heard your shackles? Has I ever heard your oppressions? See, I come among thee. And he says, Thomas, 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 I am here today to transform your life. I am here today to change your understanding. I am here today to break those limitations. I need to use you greater than what you see I need to use you greater than what you hear I need to use you for I am going but I will need you on earth to go in this perimeter in these areas to speak of me I need to solidify your faith so I come over your unbelief I come over your unbelief and I bring myself unto you The Lord says, ah, I am the one. I am not a spirit. I came just for you in flesh and in bones. He says, here's my hand. Touch. Here's my sight. Touch. Let your hand touch my hand so that your hand can heal the sick. Let yourself touch my side so you can believe that I am still by your side. Thomas, touch me. Thomas, touch me. Thomas, touch me. And Thomas, touch him. And Thomas got a revelation that yet any of the disciples had to have. In the power of the revelation, he understood a mystery that none of the disciples yet even understood. Crying, my Lord and my God. Thomas was transformed in the twinkling, blinking, blinking of the eye. Suddenly, eight days prior, he was struggling with believing. Prayer prior, he was in believing. You see, the season of his life went as if it was a, uh, uh, a curve, a wave. But the day, the day the Lord has come and to demonstrate unto him that he is over his unbelief, from that day, Thomas kept a path straight, a path smooth. does not want you just he, da, he does not want just to touch you he wants you to touch him for the word of God says as he was going through the crowds the Bible says as many have touched him were healed he does not just want to touch you but he's inviting you to touch He's inviting you to experience him in another level. Thomas have experienced Christ for three years. He has experienced the power of God. He has experienced something that was dimensional, something that was different from all the prophets that have ever come 
unto the land of Israel, none of them has ever spoken as the Son of God. None of them has ever spoken as the Son of Man. None of them has ever spoken as the Messiah. To the point that the Pharisees said, the scribes and the Pharisees and the doctor of the law, that don't teach like you teach. You teach differently. You speak differently with power, with authority. Tell us, how do we pray with your power? How do we pray with your authority? Show us on which mountain shall we be. Moses was on Sinai, but we want to go upon the Mount Arab, the mountain of the Lord, and hear for ourselves. Be with you, Lord Jesus. Open unto us your mysteries. And this is Thomas. Today, I did not come for all others. I came just for you. You see, all others, when they saw the Lord, they did not touch him. Hallelujah. But he came only for Thomas. He said, not only am I appearing to you, but I'm inviting you to go even further than that, touch me. He took Thomas eight days after into a full, complete rebirth. Thomas, Thomas was fully, completely renewed. If you remember, Thomas was upon the twelve, among the twelve. In the book of Luke chapter 9, the Bible said he gave them power and authority and he sent them two by two to go in the, in the villages, to go in the towns, to go in the cities, to cast out demons, to cast out unclean spirits, to heal the sick, to preach the gospel. Thomas received the power. He received the authority. But three years after, he was empty. after he was trained but the Lord says I have need of you say Lord you have need of me Lord you have need of me Lord you have need of me three years after the Lord says I still have need of you he said when I called you I did not call you to become a superhuman. I called you to become a disciple. Just follow me. Where I walk, just walk after me. Where I stop, just stop there. Where I go, just go. But now it will come a time you will no longer go, but I will hold you and pull you there. Are you what I'm saying? I'm holding you and I'm dropping you into the area of the misery so that the Spirit of God can shift you in the dimension that is different from what you have been experiencing from all those years that you have known me. Yes, you have known me, but I'm taking you in diverse, diverse dimensions to let you experience what it is to be in the presence of the Almighty. What it is to be in the presence of the Almighty. I want to, to soak you, I want to wet you in my spirit, in my rivers, in my flow. I want to dimensionally give you the power that you need to continue, the strength that you need to continue. Thomas, I break the chains of your unbelief today. I break the chains of your unbelief. I break the chains of your unbelief. Every doubt that has carried you, every doubt that has carried you, I break them off. Thomas, Rise up and go. So, I will not just appear unto you, Thomas. But I will invite you to step up and to touch me as you never touched me yet. I'm inviting you to touch me experience me as you have yet to experience me for the work 
is great. But a field is plenty. I cannot let you go, Thomas. We have already lost Judas. I will refuse to lose you. I will refuse to lose you. I will refuse to lose you. You have been truthful to me. And you have told me out of your heart, out of the sincerity of your heart, out of the uprightness of your heart, in the presence of your brethren, that you are no longer able to carry on. But I have overlooked on this and have come to experience, to give you the experience that you need in order to never ever again go back. For, for tomorrow is yet to come. But I'm taking you into the tomorrow to live tomorrow before you start the tomorrow. Hallelujah. He's taking you in tomorrow to guarantee you you will see tomorrow so that the today we not give you the stress of tomorrow so that today we not give you the worries of tomorrow so that today we not give you the anxiety of tomorrow so i'm taking you in tomorrow you are living in tomorrow you are living in tomorrow i am living in tomorrow because i have been there with the lord he took me in there and he said my son and my daughter go into the path i have traced before thee go into the path i have traced before thee i made your path smoother i made your path straight, walk into it. For my shadow, my spirit, my strength, my word is with you to accompany you. Do not look back anymore. Forgetting the things of old, forgetting the things of past. I'm looking towards the goal. For I know I have to finish my race. I know I have to finish my race. I'm running towards the goal. I'm going to the prize. I will attend the prize I will reach the prize I will receive the prize and I will go in the name of the Lord for he has called me he has chosen me he has appointed me because I'm different and the Spirit of God The Spirit of God overshadowed Thomas. And the Spirit of God shifted him. And the Spirit of God started teaching him things that he was here to know. For the Lord told him before he left, He says, See, I depart, but I'm sending you the Holy Ghost to lead you into all truth. For I have many things to tell you, but you won't be able to bear now. But when the Spirit of God, when the Holy Ghost comes, He will remind you of the things I have spoken unto you, and He will lead you into the things I have to speak unto you, and you will be taught by the anointing that resides in you. And that anointing that resides in you will not teach you lie, but it will teach you truth. And thou shalt walk into the path of your Lord. Thou shalt continue into the path of your Lord. For thou hast been called for even such a time as this. Even Thomas, are you not? You are now my chosen. You are now my called. You are now my appointed. You are now my witness. For I have made you witness unto me to the hands of of the earth. I have made you witness unto me uh, to the hands of the earth. I no longer call you Thomas, Didamis. I call you my apostle. I call you my apostle. I call you my witness. I call you my apostle, my anointed one. For I have bestowed upon you uh, a different spirit. Go! And let the Spirit of God lead you. For believe there shall be a performance.
believe there shall be a performance for even as the Lord God has need of you even as the Lord has need of you he's providing you the strength to continue he's providing you the strength to continue say Lord God my Lord Jesus you called me you called me you chose me and then you have appointed me and you have appointed me for harvest for harvest therefore I decree and I declare in the name of the Lord I climb and I cling unto you forever and ever and ever and ever in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth Amen Amen Hallelujah let your test scream Amen 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 We bless the name of the Lord God We honor him for his goodness upon us He still wants to use you to heal the sick. He still wants to use you to prophesy. He still wants to use you to lay head on. He still wants to use you to distill his wisdom. He still wants to use you to distill his knowledge. He still wants to use you to bring into all minds and all charts captive to the knowledge of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You are better than the donkey. Hallelujah. You are better than the donkey. He's willing and he's faithful. He's willing and he's faithful. So when I tell, when I tell him, Lord, I say yes. I see all the spectrum. When I tell him, Lord, I say yes, I see all this. I say yes because he wants to utilize me as a watchman. He wants to utilize you as a watchman. He wants you to see afar, to see beyond what are the common seeds. He wants you to penetrate and to see beyond, far, above. Because he has placed upon your phone the good tidings. To announce the year of the Lord. To announce the grace of the Lord. To announce the coming of the King. To announce it on the our stops to announce it in the byways to announce it in the freeways to announce it in the highways for he says this is the hour when I have called you even you so that I separate you so that I consecrate you so that I put you apart so that I use you for my glory You are not finished and I am not finished with you. You are not finished and I am not finished with you. My spirit is still hovering over the earth. For the word of God says that in the last days I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. 
as long as you are a flesh made by God, as long as you are a flesh made by Him, you are qualified to receive the bounty of His Spirit. As long as you are made by God, you are a flesh made by Him, you are qualified to receive the bountiness of His Spirit. And therefore, in the name of God that is put upon you, He says, uh, He will seal you with the seal of the Spirit upon your forehead and all the things of the earth and all the fear of the earth and all the pestilence of the earth as he has declared in the book of revelations there will come but because of the mark of the lord upon your forehead there will not touch you because you are called into fulfilling the purposes of the one who sent you to fulfilling the desire of the one who sent you to fulfill the anointing to fulfill the prophecies to fulfill the promises he's calling you to go further he's calling you to go beyond he's calling you to go above he wants you to go to the seashore in order to see what is Do not say who am I? For it is in you who you are. Your value was taught by him before he made you. And has he designed your blueprint? Has he designed you before he made you? Because he did not make you before designing you. And the word of the Lord tells us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made because he designed you before to make you. And when he designed you, he did not let you just be a body. He breathed in you his spirit and he called you to live. And here comes he's bringing you again his spirit so that you can live even furthermore. The word of God and the promises of God he has spoken remain yea and amen the word of God and the promises of God he has spoken unto you remain yea and amen I hear like my Lord I do not want to fail you he said Peter fail me he says Peter failed me he says I do not ask you to not fail me but I'm telling you I will not fail you and because I will not fail you I will give you the will to do my will because I will not fail you I will give you the will to do my will for my name is faithful God my name is faithful God. I remain faithful even if you are unfaithful. I have loved you before you sinned. I have loved you after you sinned. And have I called you after you sinned. And I say, Peter, 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 feed my flock. Peter, Peter, feed my flock. 
have seen the potential in you before you saw the failures in you. So I call unto the potential I place in you and I say rise, rise up. Let your feeble knees be strengthened. Let your heart be strengthened. I call you not Thomas. I call you my disciple. I call you my appointed. I call you my printed. I call you my apostle. I call you my sent one. I call you my witness. For now, you can tell to your neighbor. Now, you can tell to the effort. Have I experienced him? Yes, have I experienced him? Yes, I have seen him. Yes, I have heard him. Yes, I have touched him. He's true. He's faithful. Asuriya Rabasha.